What's going on, smart people? I'm finally feeling a lot better from COVID and I'm getting back to my research. Um, and I thought it would be fun to make a video, a little one-off video, talking about the books that I use most frequently as references and things for my research in theoretical nuclear physics. Now, this is not a sponsored video. Uh, these are just the books that I really like and use on a daily basis. It's a small stack. It ain't much, but it's honest quantum field theory textbooks, pretty much. Uh, I guess before I get into what all of the books are, I should talk a little bit about what I use them for. So for my research, I really just calculate a bunch of Feynman diagrams for specific processes. And when I calculate these things, you know, it starts off by having to translate the diagram into math. So you literally have to remember, what does squiggly line translate? What does that mean? What does vertex mean again? All that stuff is in any, pick any quantum field theory textbook, those Feynman rules for translating diagrams into math will be in there. So that's useful. Second is when you go to actually calculate these things, oftentimes you have to do these integrals over momentum that are very difficult. So how can you re-express them in a form that is very easy to look up? These books will often have a procedure for doing that. And these integrals that you'll have to solve, more often than not, will diverge. And how do you tame that and obtain a finite result at the end? Uh, that requires that you pick a regularization and renormalization scheme. So what I use typically is something that's called dimensional regularization. So instead of doing the integral in four dimensions, uh, three space, one time, I'll do it in d dimensions, where d equals four minus epsilon, where epsilon is some continuous variable. Uh, then the integral should converge, or hopefully it will converge, and when you go to calculate something physical, the epsilon dependence cancels, and then you can take epsilon equal to zero. So it's like how to do that in a systematic way. Um, it, it's nice to be able to reference that stuff in these books. So there's a whole bunch of information and detail that you didn't ask for, but let's go ahead and actually talk about the books that I use for this stuff. So we'll start with the, the crowd favorite, I suppose. Uh, it's one I probably reference the most in all honesty, which is An Introduction to Quantum Field Theory by Peskin and Schroeder. Regardless of your personal opinions of the book, if you like it or not, I think anyone who is doing nuclear or particle physics should probably own a copy of this book, strictly because this is probably the book your advisor references. This is the book that any convention they adopt or equations that they use, they probably got it out of Peskin and Schroeder. So for ease of communication purposes, it's worth picking up this book. Now, I didn't learn quantum field theory from this textbook, though I know a lot of people do. Uh, I primarily just use it as a reference book for all of those integrals and relations that I don't have just in my memory. And I've used it so many times that integrals pop up so frequently to where I know exactly where they are in Peskin and Schroeder. It's page 807. This is going to be embarrassing if it's actually not. It is. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you look at these integrals, they look pretty obscure and complicated, but they show up all the time, and I'm not going to solve it from scratch every single time I see them, so it's nice to be able to look this stuff up, even though it's just, you know, in an in a appendix. Um, so I didn't learn, speaking of learning quantum field theory, uh, I learned it in a weird way first. I learned it using the path integral formalism first, as opposed to second quantization. If that means nothing to you, in regular quantum mechanics, your observables are replaced with operators, in second quantization, your fields also become operators. That's what's a really common formalism to use in field theory, especially for people who do perturbative uh, calculations. If you're someone who does like lattice QCD, you may use the uh, Feynman path integral formalism instead. In fact, you almost definitely will. So I learned field theory through the path integral formalism. If I'm ever reading a paper that is using it, a lot of that stuff I've already forgotten, if I'm being honest. But if I need to be able to understand what they're saying or what they're doing things for or remember basic relations, I'll typically reference this book. It's really just the lecture notes, I think, from uh, Pierre Van Baal. It's called A Course in Field Theory. Uh, it's pretty good. It's, it's kind of like a handbook, if anything, because a lot of the derivations are really left as exercises. So if you already understand that the relations hold and you agree with them, then it's nice to be able to use them. However, it was a little bit frustrating learning from the book because there are a lot of skips and, and steps for certain derivations. But nevertheless, I think for learning about path integrals, it's as good as any other book probably. Next, we'll go ahead and talk about uh, quantum field theory and the standard model by Schwartz. 
I kind of take back what I said maybe about uh, Peskin and Schroeder. I think I might use this one a little bit more, specifically because I use this to learn field theory, second quantization. I think that this is a fantastic book. I think it contains all of the information that Peskin and Schroeder has for the most part, and Peskin and Schroeder is pretty comprehensive. And then this takes it a little bit farther. It, it just feels more modern. It has all of the nice little relations and identities and the appendix, if you need to remember Dirac algebra or those crazy integrals or, or whatever. It's It's got a very nice appendix. Uh, it's a weird compliment to give. Um, and I think it, it made learning second quantization very easy. It has just a large a se a section on path integrals if you want to learn that stuff. I can't recommend this any more strongly. I really enjoyed this book. If and when I'm ever at a point in my research where I don't really understand something and I have to learn it before I use it, I will do so using this book. And then when I actually reference it and say a LaTeX document for a paper or something like that, I'll find out where the relations are in Peskin and Schroeder, just because I know my advisors don't have this book, they have Peskin and Schroeder. So I'll, I'll usually learn from this one and then use the equations in documents and stuff from Peskin and Schroeder. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I can't recommend this one any more strongly. I think it's a great book. It, it does such a good job at motivating things too, especially in the renormalization section. Speaking of renormalization, I have an entire book on it uh, by John Collins. It's called Renormalization. I mentioned that when I do a lot of these integrals, they almost always diverge, which is amazing. Uh, and we have to find out how to remove those infinities in a consistent way. This is a whole book on motivating where these infinities come from, why you are allowed to try to remove them depending on, on the circumstance, and how to do so. And they pick on just like scalar field theory, so it's it's not it like strips everything of the fancy bells and whistles that you'd kind of be missing the point. So I think they focus on like phi cubed theory a lot. So it's just a simple field theory. It's pretty easy to follow, I think. And it's there's so much information. I'm definitely not through this book yet, and I really still don't understand renormalization as much as I should. But whenever I have to do calculations like introducing counter terms or whatever, this is the book that I go to. Um, I think I mentioned before that I use this book and a lot of people were like, why do you use that book? So if you have other recommendations on a better book for renormalization, please leave them in the comment section. But again, you know, this is the book that my advisors have. So if I do something wrong or if I don't know what to do for something in renormalization, they'll be like, oh, it's on page blah, blah, blah of Colin's book. So again, for communication with your advisors, this is pretty great. And that concludes my little stack of books that I use for my research. For the most part, there's one more honorable mention, I suppose, which would be Quarks and Leptons by Hausen and Martin. Uh, when it comes to deep and elastic scattering or elastic scattering and, and understanding how to relate things like conserved current ele matrix elements to form factors, or if you break the target up to structure functions, I had a really difficult time developing any kind of intuition about those kinds of things from these books here. Uh, they do they mention them sporadically throughout the book, but it's never like the focal point, whereas they do take a lot of time in quarks and leptons to explain that stuff. So, And that's also a book that your advisor probably has. It's a very old book. Uh, so quarks and leptons is, is also one that I recommend very strongly. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section if you have any recommendations for books that I should add to my collection. And I'll see you all there.